The Verge ran a report recently that Microsoft is planning to, once again, rebrand Copilot. The convoluted naming that has given us fan favourites like Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365, or even Microsoft Copilot with graph grounded chat, might be going away in preference of simpler naming. This is being picked up by various other outlets, but so far as I'm aware, no word from Microsoft on whether this is correct. However, I do think there's value in thinking about what Copilot is called, why this might be happening, or at least discussion of it happening, and whether this should, in any way, be meaningful to Copilot's users. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more. If we rewind to March of 2023, the new product that Microsoft announced, which led me to declare that Microsoft had just one work was not called Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. It was announced as Introducing Microsoft 365 Copilot, your Copilot for work. And now, nearly 18 months later, the talk is that this is a name that will be returning. In fact, the product we were waiting for through last year was called Microsoft 365 Copilot almost right the way up to being released. And then, when we'd all got used to what Copilot was going to be, Microsoft decided to shake things up by renaming Bing Chat to Sydney. Sorry, I, I mean Microsoft Copilot. And Microsoft 365 Copilot suddenly became Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. Unfortunately, though, there was one big problem with Microsoft's decision to adopt this new naming scheme. Absolutely no one cared. We have continued throughout to see content about Microsoft 365 Copilot, books, articles, videos. I even get far more engagement here when mentioning Microsoft 365 Copilot over Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. The big frontline battle in describing Copilot hasn't really been the Microsoft Copilot versus Microsoft 365 Copilot issue, so much as whether Copilot is called Copilot. Copilot or some other odd variation. And then within Microsoft 365 Copilot, there's apparently going to be changes too. Microsoft Copilot with graph grounded chat is becoming business chat, a very logical name change. But is it new? Absolutely not. Now, I want to show you an entirely new standalone experience business chat. So basically, Microsoft is just undoing what it did a year ago, and we can all just continue calling Microsoft 365 Copilot what we have all along. Is this topic really worth a video? Well, I think there's more to consider here. If you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a like. And if you want to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Copilot is a fantastic brand name for the AI assistive technology that Microsoft announced as Microsoft 365 Copilot, what now feels like an age ago. For a company well known for being really bad at branding, this brand knocked it out the park, as it not only describes the product, but an intent in how it should be used. However, the many layers of Copilot across both the software and hardware stack has significantly diluted not only the value of this name, but also the clarity. How can the Microsoft Copilot product, previously Bing Chat, sit alongside the Microsoft 365 Copilot product and a Copilot Plus PC, all as different faces of Copilot, in a confusing mess, whereas if everything is a Copilot, then the term is meaningless. I've spoken here before about this glut of co-pilots offering greatly more differences than similarities, and the focus Microsoft has is seemingly adding a co-pilot to everything, whether or not it actually makes any sense to the original intent of this set of products. The big takeaway from me in these changes is a focus on Microsoft 365 taking ownership of co-pilot. This conceptually makes a huge amount of sense, as what Microsoft announced with Microsoft 365 co-pilot was a product that lived across 
that set of tools. What we have today is more of a mess with co-pilots in Word, Teams, PowerPoint, etc. that have gone in different directions and with a need for Microsoft to corral them back into an assistive tool that can be switched on across the suite and then serve similar purposes wherever you use it. There are two big pieces of negative feedback I hear from clients about Copilot, and neither has anything to do with the name. First, and I've talked about this here many times, it does not objectively deliver everything Microsoft said it would in many significant areas. And secondly, and relevant to this point, it's too hard to adopt because of the various idiosyncrasies that exist across the various products in which it is present. If taking this back to the roots of what it was once called also returns us to the promise of a copilot that lives across Microsoft 365 and provides very closely linked help that's contextual to each app right the way through Microsoft 365, then I think there is benefit to this slight change of direction. However, as I have said before, I think it's vital that the Copilot brand is not just blanketly applied to anything that's AI, which seems to be the case right now. Microsoft should think carefully about what is actually, in terms of the services it provides, a Copilot, and then tightly integrate those features into the Copilot for Microsoft 365 or Microsoft 365 Copilot license to make it seem of value to users. This might mean that some co-pilots need to be called other things, but I think that's okay. Copilot cannot be seen as premium and desirable while also being ubiquitous and confusing. Adopting Copilot or similar AI tools can be hard for the reasons discussed in this video and many others. Whether you are new to Copilot, needing help with an ongoing adoption, or looking for a strategic advisory partner to help you achieve the most with these technologies in the future, I welcome you reaching out to learn how my services will deliver value to you. Check out the links below where you can find more content like my currently free AI adoption course for executives, alongside opportunities to book me for one-on-one -on -one technology coaching, group training, or project and consulting services, including Microsoft 365 Copilot adoption. Copilot, whether that be what was once known as Bing Chat or Copilot for Microsoft 365 or other Copilots, are tools that I use daily and I believe deliver great value. I also continue to be impressed by the pace of change in these products that enhance them with huge regularity. But I have also highlighted before how I believe that those responsible for the messaging and branding of these products have made big missteps by promising more than can be delivered and not being judicious enough in describing and naming products accurately. Ultimately, I'm unconvinced that yet another naming change writes the ship on what at this point seems like a cultural issue, not just for Microsoft, but for those who are involved in product communications in each of the large AI-focused tech companies. However, if this new name also comes along with the purported refocus on product, then perhaps it's going to be a third times a charm for Microsoft in closely aligning how it describes and talks about this product alongside what it's actually capable of doing and how it plugs into each of the tools it's designed to help users with. A copilot that's really hard to work with isn't much help to most users, and so better integration is essential. What do you think about this? Why do you think Microsoft might be rebranding? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.